Hey everyone, it's Caitlin. Welcome back to another journaling video. In today's video, I'm gonna be setting up my 2024 Hobonichi Weeks, which I have with me uh, right here. And I'm gonna be going through and kind of setting up how I want to use the different pages, putting in some sticky notes, outlining what I wanna do, so that come next week when I open up this planner and start to use it for the first time, I have my plan laid out, I have my tabs in place, and I'm essentially ready to go and start using my planner because I've been waiting a couple weeks to finally start to be able to use this guy, which I'm really excited about. So I thought I would take you with me today as I kind of go through the planner, I don't have anything in the planner, it's completely empty, and just kind of create the game plan for how it's gonna work for me next year. And uh, I hope you enjoy seeing how I am gonna be setting this up for 2024. Before I start doing the setup portion of this video though, I thought I would go over the planner that I'm using for next year, as well as a couple supplies that I have ready with me here that I'm gonna be using as I set this up. So first with the planner that I have going on here, this is a 2024 Hobonichi Weeks. It is the uh, standard Hobonichi Weeks, which means that the typical standard pages that you would get in this, the calendar pages, the weekly pages, and the, I think it's like 75 or so notes pages. And this specific planner that I have is the Tommy Taro Makino design for this planner. And around this planner, just to protect it, I've put the clear cover by Hobonichi and it just fits really well around the planner. And I have a pen loop here, which has my everyday pen. This is a, and I actually have the correct name because I've been, I've been calling it something else. So this is the Uniball 1F pen. The F is very key because uh, the regular Uniball won't actually fit the refill that I personally use in this pen, which is the Sarasa Brown Gray 0.5 millimeter gel pen refill. So even though I'm using a Uniball 1 pen, do not be fooled. I'm actually using my Sarasa uh, gel refill, which I've been using in my journals and planners for probably like, oh, I don't even know, like two or three years now. It's uh, kind of my go-to when it comes to planning and writing in general. And then besides the planner, which we just have, you know, the planner, the cover, the pen, I have a couple supplies, which I'm gonna be using to uh, put in this planner, but also just kind of set it up. Um, some things like some clips and tabs, some sticky notes and some stickers. So I'll go over that now so you can see what I'm using. Okay, so for my tabs, I have two versions that I'll be using. The first is this little guy here. This is a book dart, which I've used for a while. You can kind of see the patina on that. And uh, the other three that I'll be using here are, here we go, um, these little metal tabs, there we go, um, which are by Midori. These are the, I've seen them called orange, I've seen them called gold, but they kind of start out as this like copper color and then they patina to be a very similar brown to the book dart here, which is also copper. And uh, I'll include links for all these supplies below, but you can actually get both of these tabs from Jet Pens, which is, very convenient, or if you live in Toronto, a bunch of our local stationery stores sell them, so that's great too. Besides the tabs, I'm gonna be using just some plain sticky notes. Uh, these are just to uh, write down how I'm gonna use the page and stick them in, so I won't be probably using these within the setup very much, but just more to kind of map out and uh, brainstorm the setup. And then I'm also going to be using some stickers from my 2023 sticker set from Traveler's Company. They now have the 2024 version of this set and the stickers I'll be using are the same stickers that you can actually find in that set. So uh, they're not actually the front stickers here, which are the kind of limited design that they create every year. 
and I'll show you how I'm using these as we get into the setup. But besides those few supplies, I think that's everything. I need a pencil to write things down, but that is pretty much all we need today. So let's just get started and start planning out how how this is going to be used for 2024. So in the front here, I just have this card that came with the planner. I might switch this out for like a photo or something if I decide I want more decoration, but uh, I'm mostly focusing on like the functional setup of this planner today. I don't really plan to use anything but pen in this. It's very much going to be a planning and organization tool. There's not gonna be any decorating or anything like that. So there's not gonna be any, I guess, fun deco moments going on here. It's gonna be very, very utilitarian, which is what I want to focus on using my planner as this year. The first section that we have in the weeks here is the 2024 important dates. I'm not gonna use this section, I don't think, just because I don't think I will need it besides referencing the yearly calendars. This next section I will be using and I'll quickly mention, as I'm going through these pages, I just wanna uh, <laughs> clarify that I didn't come up with these ideas on the spot as I'm talking to you today. A couple weeks back, I kind of wrote down some rough ideas and um, some thoughts on what I wanted to use these pages for. And as the weeks have gone on, I've kind of thought about them, ruminated on them a little bit. And now as I'm going in, I'm kind of solidifying those ideas and making them a little more concrete. So I didn't just come up with these, but I find for me with my thought process in creating something that uh, is well suited to me, coming up with a couple initial ideas and then letting myself sit and think about it really, really helps make sure that what I'm putting in here makes the most sense for me. So starting with this page, this is the yearly index. Originally, I was thinking of using this as a weather tracker but as I've looked at this more, I think it would actually be more useful for me to track my days off slash time off, whether that's a holiday um, because of like a stat holiday from work, a personal day or a vacation day. And I think that would just be helpful to track as the year goes on, but also in advance, I can flip to here at the beginning of each month and see if I have any days off that are already scheduled that I want to then transfer into my monthly calendar. So I'm gonna write that down here. So I think I will actually, I'll put this up here. And I'm just gonna write time off so that I can use this to track time off. I might do it for whether I'm not I'm not like 100% sold, but I'm thinking this would be good for tracking time off, but we will see. And I apologize if in, in advance if you can't read my cursive, but that is, we're going for like messy in this setup. We're not going for like neat handwriting. I'm just getting it down and getting it in the planner. <laughs> So we have the yearly section, which will be for tracking time off. Immediately after that, we go into the monthly spreads for the entire year. For these, I have a pretty, pretty standard plan. I don't think I need to actually put a sticky because I think it's pretty well laid out, but how I'm planning to use this area is for monthly uh, dates and appointments. So I'll be writing those here in the calendar section. I want to use the left sidebar for habit tracking, and then I want to use the check boxes here for priorities for the month, or big things that I want to keep my focus on throughout the month. And this is where the stickers come in. Nope, aha, here they are. I discovered these stickers in the set for the kind of yearly stickers that come with Traveler's Company. And I was taking a look and I thought they would actually be potentially helpful to use in this calendar for marking different events and stuff. 
I did like a quick test with one of them. Here, I'll show you. And because these are cream, they match the Hobonichi paper quite well. And they also perfectly fit in the little box here, which I thought was kind of cool. So I thought I might use these in the monthly section as well, just to kind of help. I'm gonna peel this off very carefully. <laughs> just to kind of help mark those dates that I want to bring more attention to, or maybe I'll add these to like all of the dates so that each different thing has a sticker that corresponds to it, but I thought that would be kind of cool. So I'm thinking of using these stickers in this spread just to help with that and organizing my month a little, a little better. But yeah, I'm gonna be having dates and appointments here on the monthly spread. Habits on the left, I'm gonna track things like how often I fill my or complete my move ring on my Apple Watch, when I'm exercising, when I'm taking my vitamins, just like things like that that I wanna kind of keep track of and make sure that I'm doing on a consistent basis or a frequent basis during the month. And then priorities at the bottom here, probably. So the first monthly calendar that we have is December of 2023. So I'm gonna be filling this out come next week. And then this planner goes until, oh, I thought it was December, but it looks like it goes until March. Yeah, March of 2024, which is cool. So we have a year and a couple months at the front of calendars. And then this is the first weekly spread that we have which consists of the uh, majority, the majority of the planner. So for this weekly spread, I have a plan for this. I am going to put my sticky note down. <laughs> and uh, essentially how I want to use this is on the left. I want to keep a overview of any like appointments or high level uh, events that I have going on during the week. So pretty standard for planning and appointment and time tracking. And then on the right, I'm gonna use this section as my weekly master task list or to-do list. I've been doing this in my Hobonichi memo book for now before I had the, uh, the pages to use this planner. But pretty much what I do is I use this column on the left. Hobonichi gives you this invisible column which you can see right here, which has, I think, six grids inside it. I use this to write each letter of the week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I don't write the weekend because my rationale is I try not to have stuff to do on the weekend or just not a lot of stuff to do on the weekend. Um, and then I have a dot here. And essentially what this does is it allows me to put the task under the day that I think I'm gonna do it. If I'm not gonna do it on a specific day, I will put it under the dot because that signifies non-date specific tasks. And uh, this, this style of weekly planning or weekly to-do list is what is called an Alistair method list. So I'll include a link to a blog post about this below, but it's very helpful. And I like using it for scheduling my tasks but also as a designer, I find that sometimes I'll be working on the same task over multiple days. So because I keep it in a weekly list like this, I can write out the task once and then I can just kind of add the dots on the days that I continue doing that task. So I don't have to rewrite the task, which is great, but then I also can see how many days I've spent doing that thing. So it's really helpful for uh, time tracking as well. So I'm gonna write down left is going to be dates and appointments. And then right is going to be master tasks. And that is how I'm gonna be using, using that. Next, we have the notes page. So we have an index here at the front. I might use this, I might not. <laughs> and then we have a bunch of notes pages before the back pages begin. 
For these, I'm planning on using these pages for important collections and notes. And I have a couple in mind that I wanna put down to start out the planner. So the first two pages here, I'm gonna mark a sticky on this side because I will need both pages for this. I'm going to use these pages as a section for capturing projects or big tasks that I need to do as well as just kind of reoccurring or other tasks that I need to do across the month. So think kind of like a future log, but just for tasks. And I'm gonna do a similar method to my weeklies where I have each month in each column. So I'll have six months here and six months here. And then I will have the task name across. So the benefit of this is I don't have to rewrite a task for every month. So something like getting my fringe trimmed, which I have to do once a month, I can write down once and then I can cross it off as I do it each and every month. I think this will be helpful, not just for tracking when I, when I last did something. So checking to see if I've had my fringe trimmed yet, or I need to schedule that, or I need to move that to my to-do list to then do. Um, and also I think it will just be helpful for when I start the month, I have kind of a list of the more regular things I need to do. So when I create that task list, I have that to work off as well as any other kind of one-off things that I've written down as the year has kind of gone by. So I'm gonna write this here as yearly task list. So that will be those two pages. And then the next couple pages will probably be the similar things. So I'm planning on here to use this as a section to write down my monthly task list. So for each month, I want to create a task list back here so I can write down my list of things I wanna do. And I think I will do this uh, like the Alistair method as well. And I'll have each week in a box and then I might do one for non-date specific tasks for the month and then one for like, uh, maybe like future tasks or something. Maybe I won't use that column. So this will be for monthly tasks. And I'm gonna make one of these pages for each month as I, as I go. And then I'm also thinking of adding beside the task list a stationary spending tracker because I like to track that because it's one of my hobbies and I find that it can be easy to spend money. So I prefer to just track so I can be aware of how much money I'm spending on, you know, fun stuff like journaling. And I'll probably add other collections as they come, but those are kind of the key ones that seem important to me to add right now. Besides that, I probably won't use any of these back pages. So I'll probably leave those for now. And I'm just gonna go in now as well and to add my tabs. So the first one I'm gonna add here. This will be for my yearly index. Actually, I'll add this on the other side, like this. Yeah, that works. The next one will be for the current month that I'm on. So that can go over here. Like that. The current week, I will have my book dirt marking. Maybe, maybe not there. Yeah, and then I will have my last divider over here to mark off my notes page. So we have the three tabs here set up. 
so I can easily go between the different sections that I will probably be using the most. Okay, and that is the plan. That's how I'm thinking of setting this up. Super simple, but I think it will be really effective for just planning and organizing my life, which is how I want to use this book in the coming year. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I set this book up. I hope it was helpful, helpful for you, maybe gave you a couple ideas for how you wanna set up your book. Uh, let me know below how you are gonna be using your planner next year, if you are using one. What do you like to track? Uh, do you use it as a task manager, tracking appointments, or do you use something else and kind of have a multi-book digital analog system going on? I would love to know. And besides that, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye everybody.